Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome to another one of my pipe drive training videos. In this video, I want to show you how to get started with workflow automation inside of pipe drive. Now, if you have any questions at the end of this video, please feel free to leave me a comment below. If you're new to this channel, I have loads of other videos about how to get more out of Pipedrive and common mistakes to avoid. And we were actually voted Pipedrive's Partner of the Year for 2021. So if you would like help with Pipedrive, setting up your account, onboarding your team or automating your sales process, then check out the link in the description below to learn more about our Pipedrive consulting options. So to get started, let's briefly talk about what workflow automation actually is. This is the feature in Pipedrive that allows you to automate simple actions throughout your sales process. So an example might be when I move a deal from one stage to the next, I could use that deal stage change as a trigger to then send an email to somebody like the, the contact on the deal. I could use that to generate a, an activity for myself or for somebody on my team to follow up. I could even connect Pipedrive with a third party app or service like Asana or Slack if I wanted to. Now, there are some limitations with Pipedrive's workflow automation, and this is why with a lot of our clients, we also use Zapier. Zapier is a third-party automation tool. It works a bit like Pipedrive's workflow automation, but it is a lot more powerful. So unfortunately, not everything is possible with workflow automation. An example of that might be calculating the commission on a deal is something that workflow automation just can't do at this stage anyway, but that's something that Zapier could handle. So if you have any questions about what's possible, what's not, again, feel free to leave me a question below. If you've never used workflow automation before, it can be a bit kind of tricky to work out what should I even do. So what I'm gonna show you today is how to create an activity when you move a deal from one stage to the next. This is a very simple automation that basically anyone could apply to their sales workflow. If you just think about when I get a deal to this certain stage in my process, what do I need to do next? and we can use workflow automation to automatically remind you to do that thing. So here we are in the workflow automation section of my account, and there are a bunch of templates you can play with if you want to see what's possible. There's, there's tons of good stuff in these templates here, uh, but to get started, I'm just gonna create one from scratch because I find that's the best way for me to explain how a workflow works. So I'm gonna start a new workflow and I'm just gonna give this a name. And just as a little tip, what I like to do is name the workflow kind of the trigger and then the action. So I'll say, stage is you know offer made i like to do a little arrow and then i'll say create activities and then i'll put in a description here you know creates a list of follow-up activities okay so here i am inside my blank workflow and to start my workflow i have to add a trigger now triggers are things that happen inside of Pipedrive to start the automation. So a trigger could be, for example, a deal being created or updated or deleted. It could be a person or an activity or a lead or an organization being created or updated or deleted. Or even actually we have projects now, which is a new feature that's coming out. So because we want to create an automation where when a deal moves from one stage to the next, we're gonna use the deal updated trigger. Now, updating a deal is very vague. It could be changing the value of the deal, it could be changing a custom field, could be changing a stage. So the next thing we need to do is apply a condition. And I could, I could filter my deal based on any of the variables in my deal, like when it was created, uh, the owner of the deal, the pipeline it's in. In this case, I'm gonna look for deal stage, and I'm gonna say, when the stage has changed to, and then I'm gonna put in my offer made stage. So now, We've, we've updated the deal, but only if the deal stage has changed to offer made will this workflow actually do anything because I have this conditional logic in place. I'm gonna click my action here and I could add additional uh, conditions if I want. I mean, if I actually go back to this initial condition block here, I can add multiple conditions. If I need multiple criteria to be valid, maybe I say only, only if the deal source is you know, uh, Google. So I could add that as a condition. I can also add additional um, sets of conditions. So I could say here, if the deal stage has changed to this and the deal source is Google, or, and now I have a new block of conditions, I could say, if the deal stage has changed to, and then maybe I choose a different stage on a different pipeline. 
So I could say either all of those conditions have to be met or all of these conditions have to be met. So I can, I can kind of build in multiple layers of logic if I want to. And then going back to here, I can have multiple condition blocks if I need to kind of apply multiple conditions throughout my workflow automation. I could put a delay in here if I want to. This is a relatively new feature and I can delay for up to 30 days. Um, so I can say, right, I can put in uh, 30 days here. So if I don't want this activity to be created yet, I could, I could put in this delay step if I wanted to up to a maximum of 30 days, but I'm not gonna do that in this case. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my action. Now an action is something that the workflow is going to do. So that could be, creating a new lead or updating a lead. It could be converting a deal to a lead. It could be creating a new deal. It could be duplicating the deal, adding a product to the deal. Uh, it could be updating a person, updating an organization, creating an activity, sending an email. Or as I said in the intro, I could even connect um, Pipedrive to something like Slack or Asana or a number of other third-party tools. In this case, we're gonna say, just create an activity. Now, when I create this activity here, it's, it's asking me what, what fields related to the activity do we need to define? So when I set up my activity, I want, to, I want to assign it to a particular person. And a good best practice when you create activities is to make sure the activity is linked to the relevant deal, the organization, and the person. Otherwise, if you don't do this, the activity will be created, but it'll kind of just be in limbo in the account. It won't actually be linked to anything. Uh, I'll put in a note and uh, I think we'll stick with that for now. So now I can configure the activity. So I could say, let's just call this day, day one follow-up. I'm gonna say this is gonna be maybe an email. I could, I could have this be a call if I wanted to, but I'm gonna stick with an email. And then when this is gonna be due, I could say this is due the same day, or in my case, I'm gonna say in one day. Or I could apply a custom range if I want. I can, I can use the custom drop down options here. So I could say in one day, but skip weekends. We don't want to do it on a weekend. It's just put in my default time zone based on my location. And then I'm going to say this should be assigned to the deal owner because maybe I'm not the only person using Pipedrive and I want to make sure this applies to everyone, this automation. So I'm going to say whoever the owner of the deal is, that person will be assigned this activity. And then here, this is where I can link the activity to the deal. So this is really just what object are you linking the activity to? And in this case, there's only one deal that's being referenced in this automation. So I'm just gonna say link it to the deal, link it to the organization and link it to the person. If you're looking at this and you're wondering, what's this deal organization and deal organization before? What's all that about? Um, what this means is, Technically, updating this deal, one of the things I could be doing is changing the organization that's linked to the deal. So this is where I can specify whatever the organization was on the deal before the change, I wanna use that organization. Or if I wanna use the organization that's linked to the deal after the change, I would use just deal organization. In this particular example, it doesn't matter. I would achieve the same outcome no matter what option I choose. But just keep in mind that Technically, the organization might have been the thing that changed, so you might want to be careful which one you select. And then finally, I can put it in a little note down here, you know, uh, make sure they received initial email and it didn't, and see if they have questions. Okay, so I can put a little note in there. So there we go, that's my simple automation setup. The deal is being updated. This automation will run when the stage has changed to offer made, and I'm gonna create this activity. I'll do one more, just because I wanna show that you can string together multiple actions. So I'll just do this again really quickly. So we're gonna create another activity, and this is gonna, we're gonna do the same as before. This is then gonna be day five follow up, and this is gonna be a call due in five days assign to the deal owner, link it to the deal, link it to the organization, link it to the person. Okay, so my automation is almost ready to go. The final thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it on 
and I'm gonna say, I want this to be triggered by anyone, not just me, but anyone on my team can trigger this because it's gonna be really useful. So let's give this automation a quick test. Here is a deal that I'm working on. You can see I'm moving the deal through all these different stages uh, and I can even update you know, um, custom fields on this deal. I'm updating the deal in lots of different ways, but my automation isn't running yet because I have that condition in place. Now I'm gonna move my deal to offer made. It's gonna trigger my automation. It's gonna check, it's gonna pass that condition because I've moved the deal to that stage. And you can see my two activities have appeared. I've got my day one follow-up due tomorrow with my note and my day five follow-up due on the 15th, uh, which is actually, I think the following, the following Monday because we're skipping weekends. And so there you go, a really nice, simple automation that uh, I, could, I could replicate this for every single stage of my sales funnel if I want to. I could create a checklist. So for each stage that I get to, here's what we need to do next for this stage. I'll just show you a couple of the other simple workflow automations that I've created just to give you some ideas. So a really another a really good simple one that you could apply today, which I think everyone would have use for, is a simple deal renaming automation. So I have in here, when a deal is created, if it doesn't already contain the word Asana, Zapier, Pipedrive, Retainer, or Priority, because I actually have Zapier connected to my account that's creating some deals and it uses some of these words, if the deal is just manually created by me, I then automatically rename the deal to just the person's name. And that's good because if you watch what happens here, when I create a deal, like Warwick Palm here, it, it puts this word deal on the end of the person or the organization's name. So and I, that's, I find that kind of annoying. I don't need that word deal on the end. So if I just, um, in fact, let's strip out that organization there for a sec. So if I just create a deal, I've just attached a contact and I save that, let's watch what happens. You see the deal gets renamed straight away. In fact, if I go to my change log, you can see the title changed to Warwick Palm just through the automation there. So that's just a simple one that I set up because I don't hate that little extra word deal on the end, I find it just messy. So I've just created that simple workflow automation. Um, if I go back to that one, I'll just show you again how I could make that a little bit better in fact. What I've said here is, okay, when the deal is created, if it doesn't contain one of those words, we're updating the deal. And I've just said, update the title of the deal. That's the, the sort of attribute of the deal that we're changing. And here you can see, to set the deal title, I can insert a field into, the, into this uh, box here. So if I look for the deal uh, contact person name, and then I could even do a space, and then in parentheses I could do the organization name, and then close parentheses, I could actually have the um, person's name and then the company in there as well. So if I do another quick test there, uh, a new deal, let's do Warwick again, so Warwick Palm, minor workshop, this should get renamed to Warwick Palm minor workshop. There we go. So without doing anything, I just can make sure that all my deals have this really clean naming convention. They're easy to find and I don't have that annoying word deal on the end. I also have a couple of automations in here to um, make sure I'm maintaining good data accuracy and reporting. So I have a field in my account, which is called revenue model. And that's something I do in my reporting. I want to see how many deals have I won for different types of deal or different revenue models that I have, like projects and retainers and things. So in this case, I've got an automation where when a deal is updated and the status has changed to one, uh, has changed to one, there we go, I can actually get rid of that. Um, if the revenue model is empty, then I create an activity and the activity is to update the revenue type. Uh, or actually it should be update revenue model. That's a bit more accurate. Um, so it's just gonna create a reminder for me, hey look, you forgot to fill in that field, this should have been filled in, so uh, there's a workflow automation reminding me to do that. And so the workflow automation is great for some of these simple little things we want to do within the pipe drive sort of world. You know, if I've updated, something in pipe drive, I want something else to happen. But as I said at the start of the video, one of the limitations is uh, it's not as powerful as something like Zapier. And sometimes we wanna connect pipe drive to other tools and sources and services that we use. So an example of that might be on my website, if you wanna work with me, you can go to my website right now and you can click a link and you can schedule a call with me using Calendly. Calendly is a third party uh, scheduling tool that I use. Now, if you book a call with me, pipe drive 
can't see that. It, it can't see, it's not connected to Calendly in any way. But Zapier is. And so Zapier is connected to Calendly. It can see the booking that you've made and it will then automatically go in and create a new deal, a new contact. It will put all the information from that booking into Pipedrive for me. So there are situations like that where we can do a lot more by connecting Pipedrive to other tools and sources that you use um, using Zapier. So if you need any, if you have any questions, if you get stuck with any workflow automation, you're not sure if it's possible, maybe you need Zapier, again, please leave me a question below. And one more time, if you would like to discuss our consulting options, if you would like to streamline your sales process more, then click the link in the description below to learn more about our consulting options. Thank you very much for listening and I will see you in the next video. If you'd like more help with Pipedrive, setting up or optimizing your account, getting more out of the tool and automating more of your sales process, then check out my master Pipedrive program. When you sign up, you'll be able to join twice weekly group calls so that you can connect with me and get help and your questions answered anytime you need support with Pipedrive. Or you can book private one-on-one -on -one consulting sessions with me so that we can take a deep dive into your account, I can show you key features, and I can even conduct group training sessions. And you'll also get access to my online course, which goes into a lot more depth and detail and advanced topics compared to my YouTube videos. So if you really want to master Pipedrive, then sign up today and I'll see you on the inside.